I believe this is the best time in history to be blind, or to have any kind of disability. The accessibility features built into Apple's mobile devices provide us with a level of opportunity that has never before been seen in history. These accessibility features also allow us, as people with disabilities, to find our voice and our creative expression. I believe everyone has the right to be creative. I find my creativity through photography. Here are a few photos that I've made with my iPhone. Madeira Beach in Florida. Aerial view of Salt Lake City, Utah. Panorama of Mexico City. Columns in front of Truman Hall at University of Missouri, Columbia. River walk in San Antonio with downtown buildings in the background. Face of alien toy hidden behind balloon sunset at Indian Rocks Beach, Florida. Self-portrait of my shadow showing my white cane. I believe that you don't have to see to have a vision. My vision is a world where everyone can use technology to express their creativity. Luis Perez here coming to you from beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida. I hope you enjoyed my opening video and I want to welcome you to this presentation. As an independent consultant, speaker and author, my work focuses on accessibility and inclusive design. So why, you may ask, am I doing a presentation on photography? Well, photography is a big part of my life. And these days, the only way that I can make photos is through the use of my mobile devices, especially my iPhone. Because I have a visual impairment, I find it difficult to use a traditional camera. Using the accessibility features of my iPhone, however, I have been able to continue to express myself and find my creativity through photography. Since photography has been such a big part of my life, I want to make sure that every student, even if they have a disability, has a similar opportunity. For the next 15 minutes or so, I will share with you a number of tips for getting the most out of the camera on your mobile phone or tablet, as well as some ideas for integrating photography into classroom activities in a way that includes all learners. So without further delay, let's get started. I consider myself an iPhoneographer, and throughout this presentation, I will use the term iPhoneography to refer to the use of mobile devices for photography. However, please remember that you can use any mobile phone or any tablet that has a camera to participate in mobile photography. I'm just using the term iPhoneography for convenience and simplicity. So what is iPhoneography? It is a mobile device photography workflow. You capture, edit, and share your photos right from your phone or tablet. So you don't transfer them to a computer to edit and share. You can do this right from your mobile device. The idea here is that you capture the moment. You capture what's happening around you almost in real time. And this idea is captured in this quote by photographer Chase Jarvis when he says that the best camera is the one you have with you. Well, we almost always have our phones on us and tablets have become commonplace in many classrooms. So why not leverage these technologies that many students already own or can access in the classroom to make learning more engaging by giving students an outlet for their creativity and self-expression. Let's take a look at some ways in which you can integrate photography into your classroom activity. Scavenger hunts or photo walks can be a great way to get young children engaged as they explore the environment around them and learn their letters, words, and numbers. They can also learn their shapes by finding matching objects in their environment. And your own photos can be a great way to explore important mathematical concepts such as angles. For social studies, students can take photos of important landmarks that trace the history and development of their communities. Here's a great example of that hidden history that's all around us. This is a park near my house that I have passed by many times without really knowing the history that took place there. Well, one day I finally stopped and noticed this plaque which informed me that this was the place where exploration of North America started. In science class, students could use a special accessory known as the Alloclip lens attachment for the iPhone, which has a wide-angle lens, as well as a macro lens, which can be used to capture images of small objects. Here's an example of a couple of images that I've captured with the Alloclip that show some of the small creatures that live near my house. 
If you want to learn more about how to use the Outlook Clip to promote learning in the sciences, I highly encourage you to check out the book Calling Nature by my good friend B. Cantor, and this is available in the iBookstore as a free download. Of course, there are many other ways in which you can use photography in the curriculum, and I don't have time to go over all of them. But some of them are, you can use photography in digital storytelling projects, you can also incorporate it into project-based learning. You can document the steps of an experiment in science projects and more. I would love to hear your own ideas in the comments if you would like to add them. Now that we've looked at some classroom applications, let's take a look at some top tips for getting the most out of your iPhone or iPad's camera. There's nothing worse than capturing a great moment in a photo, only to realize later that the photo is not sharp. One way to avoid camera shake and thus blurry images is to use your Apple headphones as a remote cable release for taking your photo. All you have to do is press the volume button on your headphones and that will take the photo. Another trick is to use the grid to improve your composition. In iOS 6, this grid is found under the options inside the camera app itself, but in iOS 7, you have to go into the settings and then look for it under photos and camera. Using the grid will not only help you keep your horizon straight, but it will also help you practice a rule of thirds. And basically, this is where you move your subject away from the center of the frame to the spot where the lines in the grid meet, resulting in a much more interesting composition than if you were to put the subject right in the middle. Finally, make sure you work the scene. And what I mean by this is that you should look for interesting angles by getting low uh, to your student's level if you're shooting in the classroom or if you're out in the environment, find a high spot and see if you can get an interesting photo from there, like this panorama that I made while I was in Mexico City. My philosophy for mobile photography is to keep things simple. Uh, keep it simple silly is the motto that I go by. And the reason for this is, number one, it helps me learn the few apps that I use really well. And number two, by not having a lot of apps, I can save space on my device so that I can take more photos. I do most of my photography work on my iPhone with just three apps. The stock camera app that's included in iOS, Camera Plus, and Instagram, which is free. So let's go through a typical workflow for me. As you can see here, I have just a few apps that I use for uh, capturing and editing photos. Uh, I've already taken a photo with my camera app, uh, just the one that comes included in iOS. So there's the camera app. And what I'm going to do is go into Camera Plus, which is my favorite editing app. And then inside Camera Plus, there's a light box. I'm going to tap on the plus in the upper right, choose the photo that I'm going to edit. And this is a photo I took the other evening while I was out at the beach and import that into the light box. I'll double tap on it to edit it and we'll perform just a few edits here to make that image really pop. I'm going to tap on edit and then one of my favorite things in Camera Plus is the clarity filter. It's actually found on their scenes but when I tap on that it just add a lot of contrast to that image make it more interesting. I can also go in and crop it. I know I'm going to upload this to Instagram so I'm going to choose the square crop factor and just move that square until I get the composition that I want. I can apply an effect and a really nice one here is the overlay for this uh, image. It really adds a lot of blue there. I can uh, tap on the option there to customize how much of that effect I want to apply. And generally I'll only add about 15-20% because I want the effect to be subtle. I'll tap the check mark to apply the effect then tap done and save and that's it I've edited that image in just a few seconds now I will go over to Instagram tap on the camera icon choose that last image from my library and since I've already cropped it um, I can just tap on crop next and then I can add a nice caption uh, and other information that will make it easier for people to find this image. Other apps that I like are Hipstamatic which is a great app for trying out different lens and film combinations uh, really opening up that creativity 
Snapseed, which is a free app uh, from Google. Uh, I love the feature that it has for selective adjust. Basically, you can tap on an area of the image and adjust the brightness, the contrast, and other settings around just that point. And then I also like Handy Photo, which is great for removing unwanted objects from your photos. Along with my Alloclip 3-in-1 lens system, one of my favorite accessories is their quick flip case. With this case, I can easily attach my Alloclip lens system while still keeping my iPhone protected. Other accessories that I include in my camera bag are a small tabletop tripod with flexible legs known as a Joby Gorillapod. And to attach my iPhone when it has a case on it, I use an attachment called the eye stabilizer. Um, I also sometimes will use my DIFF case, that's D-I-F-F, if I'm shooting outside. It has a built-in shade. And then I never go out to shoot without my external battery. Um, I use batteries from a company called Mofi, and there's nothing worse than going out to shoot and then finding out that you've run out of battery because you forgot to charge your phone. So the Mofi battery will solve that problem. For my iPad, my favorite accessory is the iographer case. This is a case that allows me to mount the iPad on a tripod. I truly believe every student should be able to enjoy photography. And thanks to the accessibility features that are now built into mobile devices, such as the iPhone and the iPad, they can do just that. So let's take a look at accessible photography using the iPad. And here we're going to look at how a student who is blind can use the voiceover screen reader to receive helpful information about the surrounding environment that will help him or her compose and take a good photo. And the way voiceover works is that you move your finger around on the screen and then it will describe what's underneath your finger using synthesized speech. Then to launch an app or activate a control, you will double tap on the screen with one finger. If you're visually impaired, you can use the camera app along with voiceover to make photography accessible for you. So here I've selected the camera app, uh, which is in my dock, and I've also already enabled voiceover. So I'm gonna open the app by double tapping anywhere on the screen with one finger. Camera, viewfinder. And for this tutorial, we're lucky enough to have a guest star. At this point, I'm ready to take my picture, and there, uh, as I said, a number of ways that you can do that. You could select the take picture button and then double tap anywhere on the screen, but uh, there are faster ways to do it. Uh, you can double tap on the screen with two fingers. You could press the volume up button, or if you have a set of Apple headphones that have a microphone, uh, you can just press the volume up button on those and that will also take the picture. Now, right before taking the photo, I'll go ahead and just tap anywhere on the screen. And I can double tap and it'll autofocus for me, and then I can take my picture. Now, if you're taking uh, photos of people, VoiceOver will give you some additional information when it autofocuses. It'll let you know how many people are in the frame, the relative location in the frame, and uh, the size of the faces. So this is some great information. If you're uh, visually impaired, you can't see very well. It's nice to have that information. So let's take a look at that in action. Once I've taken my photo, I can go into the photo and video viewer, and then I can choose share on the next uh, screen. And from there, I have a number of sharing options. Some students with motor and cognitive difficulties need switch access in order to interact with the touchscreen devices. In iOS 7, Apple has included built-in switch access through a technology called Switch Control. Let's take a look at how this works for photography. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, enable Switch Control, which I'm going to do by triple-clicking the Home button. This is also known as the Accessibility Shortcut. So I'll enable Switch Control. I've set it up to do auto-scanning and then I'm going to wait for the scanning to get to the camera app and select that. Once I open the camera app, 
I can change modes. So I'm going to show you that really quick. I'm going to wait for the modes option to be selected. So I'm going to wait for the cursor to come back around. Then I'm going to choose gestures. Then flick. And flick up. And that will change my mode to square, which is great if you're sharing your photo on Instagram. The next thing is I will wait for the cursor to get to the take picture button and then I'll be able to snap my photo. And there's my photo. Now the beautiful thing about this is I've done all this with just one finger by pressing a single button on my switch interface. <music> In addition to the built-in accessibility features, there are two other apps that I like uh, because they provide access to students who have motor difficulties. The first of these apps is Pro Camera, which is a great photography app on its own. But uh, one of the great features that I like about it is that it has a full screen shutter option. For a student who has a motor challenge and who might struggle to tap on that small button at the bottom of the interface, this provides another option for triggering the camera, as he or she can just tap anywhere on the screen. With SoundSnap, you don't even have to tap the screen. All you have to do is snap your fingers and the app will take the picture for you. It's that easy. I'm a big believer in photography for people with disabilities because I believe that it can help us create a more affirmative model of disability. Too often we focus on the medical model of disability where we see it as something that needs to be fixed. The more affirmative model looks at disability as something that is a natural aspect of the human condition and something that should be celebrated. And I believe that by taking our own photos, we can, as people with disabilities, tell our own stories and celebrate who we are. By sharing our photos on sites such as Instagram and Flickr, we can show that we can lead rich, full, interesting lives and challenge the narrative that disability is a tragedy that has happened to us. You can find me on Instagram, where my username is LFP1211. Instagram is also a great place to learn by looking at photos from people that are really good at their craft. These are just a few of the people that I've had the pleasure of learning from on Instagram. Everybody, we've reached the end of our presentation here. I hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned a lot from the tips and tricks that I've shared with you and I hope that it will improve your iPhone and iPad photography. And remember, with all the accessibility features that we have available now, photography truly is for everybody. So anyone, even if they have a disability, can enjoy this wonderful hobby. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at underscore Luis F. Perez. I also have a website at www.luisperezonline.com and you can also find me on YouTube. My username is LFPerez72. Here are a few of my recent iPhone photos that I've taken. <laughs>